Hi everyone, in this particular video, I am going to be explaining to you the working of an IC using this Tinkercad software over here. So, Tinkercad, as you are aware, is an open source tool in which you can build circuits and mainly using Arduino microcontrollers. Here, we are going to be looking into a basic circuit diagram in which you are going to be using a NAND gate, which is a forehead C00. We are going to look into the working of this particular NAND gate over here. So, the input is given by the help of this particular switch over here and the particular output is going to be verified using these LEDs. Okay. So where do we get these components from the list over here and what are the components required are the ones that we are going to see first. So first by default you will be requiring a breadboard over here. So you place a particular breadboard from the components available. So first you go to the components and you select all over here. When you select all, you'll have all the list of components available. So you can go down and you can select your particular breadboard that is required. So you go and select your particular breadboard of your required size over here. After you select the breadboard, you need to place all the components on, on inside over here. So first, the required components is your IC over here. So you're going to give the 74HC00 IC, which is nothing but the NAT gate. So this, this NAND gate is available at the bottom part over here, here, it's your forward NAND gate. So you're going to click it over here and you drag it and you'll be able to drop it over here. Okay. So after you drop it, you just make sure you place the top pins on top over here, 7 pins on top and the remaining 7 pins below over here. Okay, so this is what we need to do. So this is your ground pin, this is your power pin, everything will be provided to you. This is your first uh, NAND gate input. This is your first NAND gate, uh, first NAND gate, second input. This is the output of that particular NAND gate, uh, first NAND gate. Similarly, this is second NAND gate, first input, second NAND gate, second input, second NAND gate output, and so on. So you will have all the components available. You will have all the description available over here itself. You, all you need to do is just to connect it accordingly. So. After I place my particular IC over here, my next step is to make sure that I give a switch so that I can specify the states over here 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So this is my NAND gate over here. I need to verify that. So for that, I'm going to be keeping my switch over here. So over here, I have switch option of SPST cross 4 or SPST cross 6. Okay. So I won't be requiring 6 switches over here. I require only 2. So I'll be going with this dual element packet switch. SPST switch over here. I'll be clicking and dragging and placing it over here. So that is my next connection that is to be placed over here. Next one, I need to verify my output. So for the output, I need to place an LED, which is a simplified version of looking into your output. If the LED is glowing, the output is 1. If the LED is not glowing, the output is equivalent to 0. So that is what I'm going to do over here. So next step, I'm going to make sure that my LED is placed over here. So I drag and drop it. I can change the color of my choice, whatever I want. So that I can keep it over here. Okay. So we'll go with the default red. So it will be visible clear enough. Then when you keep an LED and when you give a power supply, you need to make sure that a resistor is over there to reduce the flow of current or else there is a chance of your LED to blow up. Okay. So for a practical purpose, that is really required. So even in theory, when you are learning it over here virtually, it will be better if you have the habit of using resistors over here. Okay. So you're going to keep a simple 220 ohm resistor over here to reduce the flow of current. And that is what you're going to place. And that uh, 220 ohm resistor is taken from this particular component over here. So you take this resistor and you place it over here. You can edit the values of your choice. Okay. You can enter whatever value you want. You can edit it whatever range you want it to be. Okay. So next, uh, as we saw, this is your quad NAND gate, and as we saw, this is your dual element packet switch over here, and this is your particular breadboard over here. Next, what is required? We need to power up this particular circuit. So to power up this particular circuit, you have your power supply over here. So this power supply has to be taken from here also. That is also available from this particular circuit. So we need to go all the way down. You'll be able to see both the power supply, and you'll be able to see this particular alternator both of them are next to each other okay so you have the power supply over here click and drop it over here you can specify the prescribed voltage you want not more than 5 volt is required for glowing this particular uh, uh, led and this particular NAND gate requirement so depending on the ic requirement you have to provide the supply voltage also okay and you require you spec you uh, initialize a uh, minimum current over here also 0.5 amps 
So, and what is your next one? You need to verify the output. Not through the LED also, you can also verify the output with the help of a multimeter and that multimeter is the one that is placed over here. So, you will have the multimeter and it will be in different option modes. You have a pair, you have a resistance and you have voltage. Three of these can be measured over here. Either you can click it over here when it is running also. But when you are measuring across, you will always measure voltage. When you are measuring something through the circuit, that is when only you will be measuring the current or you will be measuring the resistance over here. Okay. So these are the components that are required. Now we will go into the connections of them. So the power supply, the red color wire is connected to the power rail of your breadboard. That is the positive. And the negative terminal is connected to the negative rail of the breadboard over here. So all connections over here are based on this positive and negative rail. Okay. Black color wire always is used for the ground connection or the negative terminal. Red is used for the positive terminal. Okay. So next one you have the negative over here of your multimeter that's connected over here and your positive is connected over here. So this is also being connected over here. Next, you are going to connect your IC's power supply. So the IC requires a power. So that particular power is given connected to this rail over here. Okay. So that is connected to the positive rail. So you short the positive positive rail in this breadboard and the negative negative rail on the breadboard over here. So you can use a lower part of this also. Okay. So what is happening over here? The ground terminal of this IC is connected to the ground rail of this particular breadboard over here. Now, what is the next step? You are making sure that this resistor is connected to the cathode terminal or so negative terminal of your particular multimeter. And similarly, this particular LED, the cathode terminal is connected to the particular negative terminal over here. The anode terminal will normally be connected to the particular positive terminal or towards the power supply. So this is when this is when it is a forward bias diode. Okay, so we require this LED that is light emitting diode to be forward biased. So the Anode should be near the positive of power supply side, whereas the cathode should be near towards the negative side. Okay, so that is what you need to make sure over here. And the anode side is connected to pin number, uh, you can see pin number 3 over here, because this is the output. Okay, so the output over here is connected to the LED over here. So that is my third pin. So the first and second pins are the inputs for my NAND gate, so that you know already. So A and B are the inputs. So I am going to connect them to the inputs of my particular switch over here. The other end of this particular switches are connected to the power supply over here. So the other end being connected to the power supply, I will get my power supply from this particular switch. So when I turn on the switch, 5 volt is provided over here. When I turn off the switch, no volt or 0 volt is provided over here. Okay. So this is what is happening with the help of these switches over here. So after placing all these components and interconnecting them, the next step that I need to do is I need to start simulation. You are not using any microcontroller over here, so code is not required to be put inside over here. So you can directly start your simulation over here. So you can see that it is a NAND gate. So NAND gate, you can see that for 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, the output is going to be 1. Only for the 1, 1 condition, the output is going to be 0. That you know for a NAND gate. Okay. So you see 0 0 you can see that the LED is on and you have a 5 volt across the output over here. Similarly when you click over here on this particular button you can see that it is changed to 1. So 0 1 is my combination over here. So 0 1 also you can see the LED is on and 5 volt is available. Next similarly you can go for the combination 1 0 and you see that same 5 volt is available over here and you can see that the LED is green. Last combination 1 1 combination over here. When you are having this 1 1 combination, what is happening? The LED goes off, the NAND gate 1 1 output is off, and you can see what is happening over here. Okay, so you can see that always 5 volt is being provided over here, whereas the LED is on and off depending upon the requirement over here. So, what you can do is you can check, you can connect another switch over here to the second NAND gate and check the third also. We can give it a different LED. Similarly, you can give your third NAND gate inputs 3A, 3B over here, and you can check the third output. And you have the fourth NAND gate over here, 4A, 4B, and you can check the output over here. So you can use all these four NAND gates of this particular IC using this particular tool and make sure they are working. I hope you understand.